How y'all doing? All right, folks, Fat Guy Flies RC. We're gonna do the build on the Technam 2010 Aeros plane. And we're gonna jump right in. The first thing we're gonna be doing is the landing gear. And first, I wanna give a shout out to TRNC Pilot, um, all caps, TRNC Pilot, all caps, for pointing out a tip for whenever you build your Technam 2010. You'll see these two little dark areas. There's two grub screws in there. You need a small Allen wrench like this and just go in there and make sure that those two grub screws are nice and tight. Because if you don't, this uh, nose gear could fall right out. All right, so you see we're at the bottom of the, uh, let me move this out of the way. The other side of the fuselage here. And you will see a triangular shaped housing and then you can see triangular shaped housing here so hmm wonder how that goes in there pretty well self-explanatory that's going to fit in there just like that okay and then what you're going to look for is you can see the front of this steering arm of the uh, servo there you want that pointy part of the end of the steering mechanism to come up and go through that channel because that way when your servo turns it turns the front of your gear so let's anchor that down just so you know every single uh, screw this is a screw together facility um, assembly and then there's uh, details little steps that you glue on but as far as screwing everything in, it's those, these little 10 millimeter screws. And you get a whole bunch of them. And they're all labeled 10 millimeter. And a 2 millimeter hex drive will work them. Put, we'll put the thing together. So you only need this one tool to put this entire model together. So you want to move your steering off to one side. Okay, now if you want to take the time to put some, maybe a little bit of thread locker on this, you can. Um, I don't necessarily like thread locker because you got to be super careful with it. If you do use thread locker, make sure you use a gel one or something that's a little thicker uh, if you can find it. Uh, because that is like death to foam. So, as an alternative, you could use Foam Safe CA or CA. This is... EPO foam, so regular CA will do. And uh, now I'm not going to do that this time, I'm, or I'm just not going to choose to, uh, because I have a, you know, my my whole thing is uh, I like to leave them where they can come undone because then that forces me to do maintenance post uh, flight maintenance when I get back to the shop. Make sure all my screws and everything is uh, nice and tight because I don't want to screw loose. We're going to talk about the pilot. How about the screw? <laughs> Anyways, so that's in there. And that's all we're doing in there. Just screwing that in, making sure those are nice and tight. Now, another thing, you're going to have these plastic doublers or these plastic reinforcements. Now, and every single one of them is shaped differently. So you're thinking, well, it'd be, you know, two for the floats and two for the regular gear. Why are they all? Every one of them is shaped differently. But every single one of these connection points are shaped for the appropriate one so you really truly should not be able to screw it up um, like that one goes there and you can even see this is the one where you're going to feed if you're putting the floats in you'll feed your little servo extension through here and there's a little bitty channel here little bitty worked out channel there that little right there to where that servo extension will ride up through there and not be bound and that they thought even the smallest little detail of that okay we thought of that now here's where we're going to grab the gear of course you know they go this way the way this goes and these go that way too we're going to grab our that one piece i just had it has a little notch in it which corns corns uh, coincides with that little notch of that servo channel that pops in there like that. I mean, every one of these have a, a specific shape, so it's only going to fit in one way. So 
<laughs> pretty simple. And you're saying, well, wait a minute, your gear's on. What about that? Well, that is for the floats. And you take a page from me, take advice from me, take advice also from Rich at RC Informer. Go ahead and install your plastic doublers and the screws that are, are part of it. That way, you'll never lose it. Okay? That way, it's already with the model. Like even with my Draco. Okay? The, uh, you know, the little, the four uh, pins you put in to hold the wing on. I put those in a little plastic baggie and I throw them inside the cockpit when, I, when I'm not, when the Draco's stored or when it's transported. That way I know I ain't gotta lose it. My big T28 Carbon Z over there. The two wing spars. And it's all, I have its own little dedicated tool and the wing uh, bolts. They're all in a baggie inside the canopy. It's just a great habit to get into and that way you don't you don't have to go find your parts for your plane they're with your plane already and that that's just something that, that's just a little tip free build tip for me i don't charge extra for it how about that these are just fitting right in there like i say you're taking a two millimeter hex drive and that's all the only tool you're going to need and just get them in there nice and snug now when you're putting anything like this you can get them nice and tight nice and tight now, if you're going into foam, into like plastic into foam, you'd go half a turn off. But this is nice and tight, so you can get in there good and tight where it's in there. You don't want to strip it, though, but you'll feel it. it when it really stops, you'll know. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. And we're going to need one more. I, I just, I mean, look, look at this. We've already got, oh, see, that's not lining up right. The screw's not lined up right, it doesn't feel right. Back it back out. Don't force it. Don't force it. Arrows, I think they may have given us a few extra screws. I don't know. I think they have. But don't, don't, if it doesn't feel like it feels resistance in there, back it back out, change screws. Even if you have to rearrange the placement of the screws. Um, yeah, see on that one there? Yeah, there you go. You'll feel, you'll, you'll feel it hit bottom. Okay, you'll feel it hit bottom. Now we're going to do this little extra step that I recommend, even though you're saying the gear is on. These only fit one way, and you'll see what I mean when you put them all together. They're all shaped for their appropriate gear, and they're their appropriate... Uh, area and they only fit a certain way if it doesn't fit right switch them around turn it around you don't have the right the right uh, doubler in there so i'm just going to go on here and just get these nice in there nice oh whoa hey I'll carry the model off the stand with me and see this way you'll never lose these plane parts and you don't think well, I wonder where they're at well they're already attached to the plane and uh, the more Equipment you can keep with the plane that belongs to the plane the better now of course if I'm not flying the plane off floats I'm not gonna carry the floats around with the plane everywhere I go But I know where all the hardware the floats are You know and like the floats themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble them I'm not gonna do it on camera, but I will assemble the floats and I'll keep them up in my little float storage area I got four or five float sets um, And that way just a matter of unscrewing the hardware that's already here and throwing them on when I want to use them. See? So just a little nice little build tip. Okay. All right. That's on there. Now we have our landing gear on, our Technam 2010. We can move our stand up out of the way. Okay. Let's turn our attention to the uh, tail feathers, okay? The, the uh, horizontal or the vertical stabilizer is already installed for us, okay? So turn our model this way, and you can see. And there's your servo. Now let's look at what the factory specs say where to connect your uh, 
elevator servo at? Where does it say? Which hole does it want you to put it in? Horizontal stabilizer. Okay. What it shows, and this is for the least amount of rows. Well, well the rule of thumb, okay, if you want maximum throw, in other words, maximum movement of a control service, you would make your connection closest in to the uh, control service itself on the uh, 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 control service itself, the, the horn, okay? So I, if I wanted that, I would put that right there, and that's going to give me the most deflection or the most movement. Now the factory, however, puts it in a more beginner friendly and puts it in the last hole right here. So we're going to start with that. And it's kind of a halfway ground because it's put it, they want you to hook it up and the arm of the servo at the furthest point out, which gives you the most travel with the servo. So it's kind of like halfway there on, on both points. Um, if you wanted to have the least amount of throw or least amount of control or, or movement, you'd be the, la the last hole out on your control service and the furthest hole in on your servo. Okay, that would give you the, the least amount. But for this for this application, this is what they're calling for. So we're going to go with uh, the factory specs. But first, we're going to secure our horizontal stabilizer or elevator and as I sub suspected that just keys right in there you're gonna have to move grab your servo from the horn pull it forward to pull that don't take your rudder and shove it forward pull the arm of the servo let you know that way you're not running the risk of damaging anything okay you're going to look down there and that, and sure enough, it line, I can see the brass in there. Same, the same little screws that they provided works perfectly. The only one screw holds that in and it's more than enough. Okay, now this is kind of tedious because of the angle here, but... Kind of have to finagle it a little bit. Okay. Bear with me, folks. This might be a good time to get a small uh, two millimeter Allen wrench because that's not wanting to join at that angle. But you know, you know what? You can always reposition, try it again. And like anything else, well, you'll you'll know it. You'll feel it when it starts to bite. You will feel it. Alright, let's get that bad boy lined up there. off camera for just a moment to get but you get the idea I might have to fish me out a uh, Allen wrench here so hold on hello this is stupid guy flies RC I didn't read the instructions for the horizontal state or the vertical or yeah horizontal stabilizer you don't use one of the smaller screws you use the one big longer screw and there you get two of them an extra one and that's why it wasn't because it wasn't reaching its destination because I was using a smaller screw and it just had short legs. So <laughs> when in doubt, read the instructions, right? I looked down and I said, well, yeah, that was my stupid self. Yeah, I'll see there now it's, it's, it's biting. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, amazing how well things work when you use the right parts. Yeah, that's. Yeah, and like just like the other thing else. Yeah. You fill it bottom out. And make sure just it's just just happy with it. All right, <laughs> and then there again, grab the servo horn and move your control service back. Now let's turn this upside down and I can show you the elevator connection. All right, the book calls for you to hook up the elevator. Where was it? Okay, on the arm, the, the, the servo arm on the outermost hole and then hook it in to the, at the long, so the hole at the very end here and at the outermost hole on the uh, servo arm and of course they've given you this fuel line uh, to uh, hold your connections in place the clevis connections in place that pops in slide it down now one thing you don't want to do whenever you're using this control line or this this fit this uh uh, fuel tubing to cover your clevis connection. Don't go all the way down on the connection. Back off just a touch because it can bind your travel and you don't the, the movement of, of that and you don't want to do that. Just almost down maybe within a quarter inch of it and then back it off. Maybe about maybe, maybe a quarter inch, half an inch away. Just enough to hold that clevis nice and close. Okay, so those are set up by factory. Basically the fuselage is done so we can do away with our airplane stand, and we can turn our attention to the main part that actually makes the thing fly, the wings. All right, now, very, very simple, okay? You've got connections for these, okay? You got a rudder, um, now this is for flap. This is for rudder. Okay, and that's a, all right. So you're gonna want. You notice you've got on your fuselage. You've got two channels here and here where the hard points of the wing will go in. But you've also got a channel here that's right below your spar. That's where your servo leads are going to go through. So let's go ahead and install our control or our wing spar. And this is like I think it's the first time you're really feeling these parts. That's a short spar, but I'm thinking there's probably one. In, yes, and there is a spar in the wing itself. This is just a joiner tube joins into the longer spar that goes looks like it, it may go the length of the wing maybe I don't really know but this has definitely got got some reinforcement so okay so let's go ahead and turn this over here remember I showed you those wing connections here and here all right I'm gonna kind of hang this on the spar just so I got a hands free little build tip but hang it on the spar fish your connection remember these connections go through um directly underneath the spar you'll see a little channel there okay i suggest taking that off getting a tool like this that has a hook on it is wonderful makes these sort of operations so much easier Get that as close as you can get it to work with it. Slide these through. This is the kind of stuff that when you watch these commercial build videos, they just speed right through this or they just skip it entirely. But I want you to see the <laughs> some of the inherent aggravation that a builder is going to go through. Now, honestly, folks, let's call a spade a spade. And uh, this is not really a build. This is an assembly, okay? We call it a build for a video just because it's, it technically is a build, but really it's more of an assembly. Now, I just noticed something. The aileron 
servo lead was not labeled, but the flap is. And the light is in totally, totally different color. It's just black and red. So, you know that when you add your Y harness to connect your two ailerons together, don't grab the flap. Grab, grab the one that doesn't have a label on it. Because then you'll know that you have... Sorry, my head's in the way there. Can I get that lay that through there? So then you'll know you've got the uh, the correct one. All right, so I'm going to pull them down. Got all three of those together. I'm going to pull them through as I join in the wing. They, it guides in only one way. And see that goes in until it stops. Remember those little short screws. Now we're going back to those again. Two on each wing. Okay. Two on each wing. So go ahead and let's drop that in there like what? What? Okay, make sure your wing's nice and seated in there. Okay. And then it has to be these screws, but it's all the screws that are left. It does appear that they do give you a few extra screws. So that's a good thing. That is a good thing. All right. They don't go in there all that deep, so don't be alarmed. Okay. One thing, if you're not entirely sure, um, kind of take a look at it. You know, got a screw there. One screw there. Yes, there is one extra wing screw and one extra nose gear of that nose gear screw. Now, I'm going to put it on the wing spar there. Just to get it up on there. Let it hang so that I can fish each of these wires through. Now, see, this is labeled as a flap. And it goes through that hole that's right underneath the wing spar. Put your other hand through there, fish it through. And if you can't get a hold of it, use a tool that's got a little hook on it to pull it towards you. Just makes your life a lot easier. And here again, the aileron lead is not labeled. So therefore I know the one that's not labeled is my aileron. So where's that one going? Where is it going? Here I'm going to use my tool. Yep, I can see it up there. It's, it's going up north instead of going south for me. Come on. Come on now. Get on in here. Get on in here. You can always turn that wire. Yeah, see I turned it. Turned the wire. And now should be able. Uh, yeah, I got a hold of it now. And light light wires are always red and black. They're almost always red and black. They're different colors, so they're easy to identify. Smaller. So I'm not. I feel very confident. I'm not going to get that one confused. Come on. There, there's plenty of room to work in here. Um, I really didn't need that tool, but it is a handy tool to have. I think you can pick a pack of uh, this and a couple other things I got at Walmart for like five bucks, you know. Oh, another build tip. Get yourself these little cheap magnetic trays. They make life so wonderful. You don't lose screws. <laughs> and trust me, I got enough loose screws, right? But you put all you, all everything that goes with the model on one little tray. You're not going to lose them. There you go. All right, make sure those are together. Drop in my screws. Okay. And let's get that down in there like that. Oh, you'll feel it. I mean, it hits bottom pretty quick. So, another thing. Sometimes you may have to rock a wing back and forth a little bit to get it to connect. I had to there just now and it immediately went in. Um, whenever you get tools for models and stuff, get stuff that's magnetic. Just makes your life that much easier. Okay, that's good and tight. That's good and tight. That's good and tight. And that's good and tight. Okay, other than... Alright, let's look at our diagram. I started saying something and I backed off. 
I will be doing a separate video for electronics, just so you know. All right. So let's go ahead. We'll put this back on the model, other than putting the, the prop on, which you don't have to, and y'all don't have to see me do that. Um, let's identify our details, our detail stuff, which is the antennas. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put all of our little antennas in. We're going to be using the ever famous ever wonderful white white blue the unknown white blue which is basically the same thing as foam tack you know what today i'll use the european version of foam tack the yuhu pour which i really like and then all i'm doing is just putting on these little teeth this is the only part that you're going to have to um glue okay this angled, 90 degree angled antenna goes on the belly and goes towards the rear. The other two antennas are the the long one, like this goes here, and then this one here, which is kind of a short stubbier one with a stubbier base, goes there. From what I can Yes, okay. So what I like to do, this kind of stuff, is put a little dab in the hole there, okay? Put a little dab on the part itself. Stick it in there, okay? Dab on that, dab on that. Dab in the hole, okay? Let that go down in there like that. Take this one back out. You know, take it out, take it out, take it out. So I start feeling it kind of give me some gluey resistance. Because you want to get air in there. Start seeing some strings. Now I'm going to leave it in. Same thing with this. I'm going to get some, a little bit of string going there. A little bit of gluey resistance. All right. And that's what I'm going to do with that. Now flip the bad boy over. Okay. Let's do our our bottom. Now, be mindful of our antennas that we just. That's why I like this oversized airplane stand. Um, then I'm not going to uh, run into those things because they're way out there. Okay. Now I've got other things. I got these little steps to install. Okay, they're very obvious where they go. Um, here's my belly antenna. A little there, a little there. I'll let that sit down in there like that. Now these are actually going hard plastic into hard plastic. Okay, they attach up here, up here by the front. Okay. It just sits in there like like so. Well, hold on now. Let me see how this works. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just like everything. It just keys in a certain way. You'll see how it goes in there. It just keys right in there. All right. We'll take those. While they're sitting in there, I'll take that one back out. Get some strings going. That back in there. Might put me a little bit more. This Yoohoo pour is actually gets a little more stringier, if you want to say that, a little quicker than foam tack. Um, I actually prefer it to foam tack, but they're both great products. Okay, it's actually a little messy. And, okay. Put air in there. All right, put our glue cap back on. Now, we can go ahead. We're not going to uh, 
do anything electronically right now, but we can at least go ahead and put the prop on so you can see what it looks like. Um, the next video on this plane will be the electronic setup on it, but I can go ahead and show you. Okay, prop, very simple. This back plate has a hexagon, I think it's a hexagon. Well, anyways, it's, it's keyed. Fits a certain way on the front of the prop adapter. It only fits one way, you'll feel it key in. Prop goes one way. In other words, it's bladed out towards you. Then you have one prop adapter. Just goes on there. Get that nice and tight. One of them little screws, one of them extra screw, and you do have an extra, keys in the front of the prop adapter, which holds your front. Just drop that in there like that, screw that in there. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick, just so you can see. I'm not putting it on tight, I'm just putting it on just enough to where you can see it. Because I'm going to be taking doing the electronics next, and I'm certainly not going to have a pop attached. But there you go, that is the Tech Cam um, 2010, all put together. It's a good looking plane. So next we'll do the electronics and uh, show you how to hook everything up. Okay, well thank you so much for watching. This is Fat Guy Flies RC. Um, I hope I didn't have my head in the way too many times, but, uh, oh, shoot, you know what? We forgot one very important step, wing struts. Oh, my goodness. It's very simple. I just looked down and saw those parts there, you know? See, read the instructions. But it's very simple, okay? You have these um, cotter pins. I don't know. Yeah, I guess they're cotter, called cotter pins. You get an extra one of them. Also, just so you know, you'll need four. Okay? You get an extra one. These wing struts, you'll see how they go. The long end, okay, they key in a certain way. Just like that. And they just set down on there. Just like that. Okay, so I suggest get your, that key's in there like that. You kind of have to push it down in there. Take your cotter pin. You just, now, shove it through the hole. But that might be, since, especially since this is the first time doing it, might be a little hard. So I like to take a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay. Shove that through there like that. Then I don't have to worry about fighting that end. Pop that end, that uh, wing on that side. Okay. Then I see hole. You may have to shove that down a little bit. You'll see what I mean when you put it together. But you see the hole there. Oh, come on now. It's going to be difficult. This build has gone so perfect so far. Now I got something that's going to be difficult for me. All right. And it goes in there like that. That one clears good. Let's go ahead and get this one in there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, so that's in there. Lost my glue. Lost my mind. All right, we're going to hook this side up over here. I wonder. Ah, I think. It goes and it becomes, make the rear approach. Yeah, yeah. May approach this connection from the rear. And it seems to work better. At least it did on the other wing. Yeah, that's going to be just fine. Yeah, yeah. Kind of feeds itself through there.
Yep. There you go. And this model, you know, like I said, you don't bump those. Uh, this model is not that big. Um, but once you start taking the uh, those wings on and off for transport, those cotter pin connections will get easier and easier. So, all right, folks, so there you go. That's the build of the uh, Technam 2010 by Arrows. And next I'll be doing an electronics video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Fat Guy Flies RC. Hello, Fat Guy Flies RC. I'm going to hold the GoPro and I'm going to show you the electronics setup on the Arrows 10, uh, Technam 2010. Now, in the, in the inside the cockpit, you can see the the vector system. Now everything going backwards towards the tail is already hooked up for you. So you don't have to mess with anything back there. What you're going to deal with is the wires coming forward and they're all labeled. And so depending on what receiver you, re you use, that's how you'll hook them up. Everything's labeled throttle, aileron, um, elevator, rudder, and flaps. And then there one, there'll be one called S bus. Now S bus is what you, you're going to need at least a six channel receiver for this. I'm using an AR620. And what you're going to want to do is hook that S bus one, it's going to be labeled S bus, into your empty port on your receiver. I suggest using what would be the gear channel because you don't have um, gear in this. Okay, it's fixed gear. You will notice, however, if you look down in there, a little Y lead that is labeled gear. And what that is, they're going to have two wires that come out of the out of the wing and hang down. You're going to want to hook that up to the ends of that wire, that Y, black to black, and then the, the, the red will be in the middle position. So you're going to put the black and then the red. So the black is going to go to the black and the red will be in the middle position. Flaps, of course, will come down straight and hook directly into your receiver. And that S bus will hook directly into your receiver. Everything, well, that comes out of the front of the vector, but everything out of the front of the vector is going to go right into your receiver. The only thing from back there is the flap. Um, the the uh, lights and everything come in as far as power through um, the vector system. Now, when you first set this up, go ahead and bind it, get it set up to your, to your radio, okay? And then when you first set this up, um, if you have everything hooked up correctly, and there is a nice manual that tells you, it has uh, Oriental or, or Chinese on one side, but then it's got um, the writing on this side. And just follow this instructions. It's very, very simple. It, it explains it better than I can, and it's gonna come with your uh, model. And I have mine, on a th for my uh, vector system, I have it set up on my B switch, and the back position is um, stability, in other words, self writing. The middle position is just no no kind of stabilization, and then the forward position is dynamic, which is same like AS3X, and it has a great explanation in the electronics. I'm sorry, I'm holding some. Let me jerk around. But it gives you a very simple, you got stability, dynamic, and direct. Direct is the no gyro. The dynamic is your, like AS3X, the stability is, is self-level. Now, the specs on the model are here. Are, uh, it has a 1450 millimeter wingspan, or 1.4.5 meters. The length of the model is uh, 1110 millimeters, or almost 44 inches. The wingspan is almost 58, uh, a little over 57 inches. Uh, the motor size is a 3536 uh, motor with a KV of 850. Wing loading with a motor, uh, I guess this is empty, is about, uh, about 43 grams. The ESC is a 30 amp ESC, but this is a three, three um, cell plane only. You can't run four cell in it, so I'm sorry guys. It has, um, actually it has six nine gram servos and one 13 gram servo. So that's wrong in the manual because you actually get a 13 gram servo 
down here in the nose to control separately controls this front gear which you need that and it's a metal gear servo you need that for that now to show you on my uh, DX9 let me show you what I've got for DX um, for dual rates for aileron I've got a hundred percent throws or 30 percent expo okay let me for elevator the same and rudder the same okay now let me show you my now flat mix is entirely subjective this is what I basic have right now this is on a spectrum so my flaps up position I have uh, positive 100% with a negative 10% on the elevator because I saw the elevator didn't quite go all the way up with the flaps all the way up so I made them or completely level so I did negative 10% to make the elevator level so watch out for that my takeoff position has 25% positive for takeoff flaps with 11% positive sorry with 11% positive or down elevator and then for landing negative 100% with 22% down elevator for landing I got it set in a two second deployment and so that's that I have my throttle cut set for on my F which is normal for me and um, I have done the voice prompts in yet but I'll do that um, but like I said uh, and uh, center of gravity is basically you see the the front root of the of the model here and you see, uh, the only thing i've done is i taxied her around the driveway just to see how she handles it she hand her ground handling is wonderful so thank you for watching thank don't forget to like and subscribe and this is fat guy flies rc god bless y'all bye bye